So Louisville, their final game before conference play. Wyoming still has another week before they start Mountain West play. And we're underway from Mark and Cindy Lynn Stadium. Louisville, of course, in red and Wyoming in white. Only their third ever game against ACC opposition. But this is a team that was picked to finish first in the Mountain West and was a penalty kick shootout against San Jose State away from reaching the NCAA tournament last year. And with it being the first matchup with these two teams, it's just really exciting for coaches just to have new teams that are able to come and challenge you. Off that turnover, Maddie Chance into the penalty area and couldn't come up with a clean chance, but it goes back post. And Wyoming showing they're going to be a threat here in the first minute. If you're joining us from Tallahassee, Jody Brown in Florida State finally got it done. Welcome. This is Mark and Cindy Lynn Stadium in Louisville. The Cardinals in red, their final game before ACC play, taking on Wyoming. I'm Jonathan Yardley. She's the national champion in the ACC tournament MVP, Casey White. And Casey, we like this matchup because both these teams have something to prove right now. Louisville needs to find that offense, and Wyoming is kind of stepping up to another level. Well, Wyoming has started quickly here, getting an early chance, but you're right. State, or beg your pardon, Idaho State, who was 0-6 and, and dropped it 3 to nothing on Thursday. And really had to turn the table and kind of welcome the chance to get back on the field quickly after a result like that. And not that you ever want that to happen, but Idaho State had also played a pretty hard schedule during their non-conference as well. But if that happens right before you go into conference play, it's something you can really learn from and, and just try to bring it into your next game. Luckily with college soccer, those games come pretty quickly. Wyoming again forcing a turnover. Pass ahead was cut out by a sliding Carson Sherry. Now here's Jamie Tatum, number two in white. Her left-footed shot rolls wide. Starting lineup for Wyoming. Couple of changes for them. Uh, Taylor Brook, center back, not even on the trip. So Sidney Miller moves from left back to center back. Ray Gerking comes in at left back. Who else do we need to look out for, Casey? Well, it's a dynamic front three with Barella, Chance, and Glover. Glover, that leading scorer on the year for them. But also Bar Bartell in goal, I think, is someone that's in really good form right now. And it's always great to have that organization from behind so the back line feels comfortable, especially in an away game. Autumn Weeks, the right back for Louisville, stepping forward here. Big strides as she tries to send it in, and it drifts toward the goalkeeper, Haley Bartell. The freshman, they call her Hobbs, as in Calvin and Hobbs, because she was bouncing all over the place as a kid. I don't know why she got Hobbs instead of Calvin, but she's at Haley Hobbs, it makes sense. A little easier to say, it rolls off the tongue quite well. It's so funny because you'll, you'll mention a player by name to a coach and they'll, they'll kind of take a second to figure out who you're talking about because, of course, within a team, they're referred to in one totally different way. We could do like a whole different lineup nickname <laughs> graphic if we, if we had to, right, for most of these teams. Absolutely. Fifth minute just underway. Wyoming in white, Louisville in red. We'll give you the Cardinals starting lineup when we get a second. Change or two for them as well as Jazzy Barella. Picks up the free kick for the Cowgirls. She's brought such a spark. She's back in the lineup on the right. Maya Maxwell returns in the middle as well, Casey. Yes, and you've got Addie Chester up top who just has, has had an excellent goal this year, but I'm really interested in Carson Cherry in the back, how she helps lead that back line with Lucy Roberts. They've been really consistent all year, and they'll be tested here against a dynamic front three. Autumn Weeks got that one away. I mean, defense has been the calling card for Louisville. When they went to ACC quarterfinals three years in a row, you were looking at really tight defenses. The scoring was still not more than a goal, maybe goal and a quarter per game. And you know the organization is going to be there from a team coached by Karen Ferguson days. And again, it's that finishing touch in the final third they've been lacking. 
Kylie Holstad getting forward for Wyoming here. This is Tatum in the middle of the field, wants to get to the right foot, tried to slip it through, and Barella wasn't making the run. Casey, are you surprised at all how much of the possession Colleen Corbin's Wyoming team has had so far? Perhaps a little bit on the road. A lot of times when you come in as the away team, you really just want to steady the, the ship in those first 10 minutes, but they've come out really aggressively. And I did expect it after we talked to Colleen Corbin this week. She did want to have as much possession of the ball as possible, but knew that was going to be a challenge against Louisville. Neat turn by Maxwell to get it out here to Addie Chester, and Holstad slowed her down. And the Cowgirls able to clear. What are the keys for Wyoming, Casey, to victory or a positive performance on the road today? Well, Louisville has a very stingy back line, so attacking the width is going to be very important. Can they make sure that they swing the ball, find that opposite side, and try to stretch out the back line of the Cardinals? And then on the flip side, if Louisville does start to get possession and start to create chances, what does their collective defending look like? How compact are they between the lines? That's something that Colleen Corbett has really liked this year. It's been a focus for them, and they're definitely going to have to bring that into this game. Holstad crunching into the tackle to win that for Wyoming. A little shifting on the back line. We told you Taylor Brook not on the trip. Sydney Miller actually is playing out wide on the left as she has been. Ray Gerking slotting in as a center back here. Louisville on the attack. Cochran cutting it back, looking for Chester. Gets to the left foot. And Bartell bravely out to slow things down and earn a goal kick. Bodies flying everywhere in the penalty area. And those are moments that are really important for Wyoming and any game, but especially on the road, just how do you recover? It's not that Louisville's not going to get opportunities. They are going to happen. It's a talented attacking group. It was a great turn right there in the penalty area by Chester, but Bartell does extremely well just to try to get something on it. Maddie Chance pressuring and a collision at the other end. Check on Aaron Floyd after Lizzie Sexton, and she met at the edge of the 18-yard area, and the ball rolled just far enough for Floyd to cover it. Cochran showing some footwork there, but Eliza Great-Smith, number five in white for Wyoming, able to break that play up. This is Savina Zamborini. Sends that one over the top. What does, you know, other than score, because that's what Louisville hasn't been able to do, what do they need to do to create the chances that are going to get a goal in this one? Well, I think just build into possession is going to be important. But like we said, they've generated a lot of opportunities throughout all their games. Are there multiple runs in the box? Can they be clinical in their finishing? But we just saw, too, where Wyoming was able to go the other way quickly after an attacking opportunity for Louisville. So that transition to defending, very important. How quickly can they get back, delay play? And Lucy Roberts and Carson Cherry are a huge part of that organization. Autumn Weeks getting forward. Wyoming able to clear for now. One back quickly, though. Roberts gave that away, though, and it turns into an opportunity for Wyoming. Chance will take it herself and send it wide of the target. And that's a lot of direct play that I think we're going to see a lot here this evening is when they win possession, can Wyoming catch the Cardinals off guard? And they're not in that rest position that they can defend easily. Maddie Chance is the recipient of a great one-time ball here. Decides to drive, super explosive, and that is the right angle for this shot. It's a difficult one to finish, but she does extremely well just to put it across frame. From the goal kick, Louisville able to win it. Maya Maxwell cuts inside, number eight in red. Now turnover through the middle, and again, Wyoming is off to the races. Glover playing it early for Barella, maybe too early as it turned out. And Floyd able to collect. 
you know, it's interesting in these first 10, 11 minutes with Wyoming, they are a team that likes to possess, but it's very clear that when they're winning possession over from Louisville, they play forward immediately if it's on. That's definitely something they're looking to take advantage of here. Well, I feel like that's something we heard from both coaches is when the ball turns over being defensively sound and how much of that is structure while you still have the ball versus your actual reaction when the ball turns over. We may not have time to answer that because there's another quick move forward for Wyoming. Now it will be a now goal kick, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, you're right. I think from a coaching standpoint, you want your team that's not primarily involved in possession, maybe on the opposite side or whatever it is, to be resting in a spot that if they lose it, they're in a good place if it gets turned over. That's a really important piece. But also what Wyoming's done here is they're playing it forward in one touch. So they're trying to catch players out of position quickly. And that's something that is going to be important for both of these teams because they both have the p ability to possess. Throw in for Louisville on the near side, 12th minute. There's Colleen Corbin, former goalkeeper at Oregon State, now her third year as the head coach at Wyoming. She is the Mountain West Coach of the Year. Last year they had four come from behind wins out of their six Mountain West Conference wins. Round up in a three-way tie for first place. The number one seed reached the conference final and lost a penalty kick shootout to San Jose State. There you see Colleen Corbin. She was Colleen Boyd when she was an All-American at Oregon State. Played briefly in the NWSL before moving into the coaching ranks. Karen Ferguson Day says, I've never met her. She did before the game today, but I like her vibes. She gives off good vibes. I would agree with that. With our with our time we got to spend with her, I, I agree with that statement. Oh yeah. No, she knows what she's doing building a team from the sounds of it and from the looks of it. Dangerous free kick here for Louisville. This is an area they, they hoped will help them get back on track. A couple of feints, back post delivery. Too close to the freshman, Haley Bartell. With that service, that back post area is a great spot to be looking for, but it's just going to have to be a little lower, a little bit more pace, which just makes Bartell decide, I don't know if I want to come for this, but this one's floated up a lot, so it just gives her the ability to feel comfortable to come out of her goal and collect. Yeah, I like the design of that. As you said, the space was there, and it just didn't come off that time. Yeah, I really liked how they did that. A few little fakes here and there. And what that does is that pushes the back line of Wyoming backwards because they have to respect that it might be served on that first one and it just allows more space. Neat footwork from Zamborini, but her pass forward was broken up and the ball still disputed. And now it'll be a Cardinal free kick. Won by Lizzie Sexton, the left back. And just Sexton right here doing well, just to get a bit of body in front. Maddie Chance with a little bit of the extension of the arm there for the foul. Chance from Lander, Wyoming, scored the goal that got them to the Mountain West Championship game last year. They returned 10 starters of the 11 from last season, but they're not all available right now. Alyssa Bedard, who would normally be the number nine target striker for Wyoming, not available yet due to injury. They're hoping, fingers crossed, to have her available during the conference season. And Yuki Shoyan, the goalkeeper, not starting either. Instead, it's cleared away there from the youngster Bartell in her third start. First one against Omaha was a dream. The only goal she gave up was a penalty kick, and they came from behind to win on the road. The second start was Thursday against Idaho State, and they lost 3 0. So, this is the opportunity for a quick reset. First corner of the game, and Addie Chester to deliver an in swinger from the left. Idaho State scored from one of these Thursday, and this one comes all the way through and is in. Louisville needs to manufacture goals, and they get an early one on a corner. 
one nothing cards. And all of that starts with the type of service. It's driven, it's low, it's not too hung up there, and just lots of runs, lots of chaos in that back post area. It's a great service here from Chester, playing it in. And it's those runs in front. Lucy Roberts jumping in front of the goalkeeper just to let this go through. It is off the defender and an own goal there. But this is what you need. If you put it into a dangerous area, good things can happen. Oh, did they need that? Big one for Louisville to get. And it's a Wyoming own goal, as Casey said. Came off the corner kick delivery by Chester. And there was a lot of congestion in that six yard box. And getting a goal like that is huge for a team that's trying to get better in that final third and the chance creations there. But a lot of times you can just feel like daunting when you're not scoring goals. So when you have one of like one of those go in, just can build confidence throughout the entire team and just that weight lifted off the group. And hey, we talked about the delivery on the previous set piece was too lofted. It wasn't hit hard enough. That was the kind of delivery that puts a defense under pressure. Everything about that corner kick, like you said, was great. The delivery was great. It, lots of bodies in front of Bartell, which is what you want. Lucy Roberts was the main one there, but also a couple other players around that were able to get in there. Haley Howard was causing a distraction. And then there was someone on the back post, had that not gone off of Sydney Miller, that could have possibly been there. So Louisville applies pressure, gets the early goal. What is the response from both teams? Maxwell sprays to the near side for Chester. Holstad able to make up the difference and move it forward for the Cowgirls. All kinds of space centrally for Tatum. She'll try it with her left foot and never really threatened Aaron Floyd from distance. Jamie Tatum, one goal away from the Wyoming career record. She's already got the points record, but uh, she's currently second in goals. Autumn Weeks, we've seen her at center back. We've seen her at right back. She's out wide today for Louisville. Cardinals will try and get some possession and settle down. That pass forces a little bit of scrambling. And a big part of that possession was from Molly Cochran playing out of that nine position. It was really congested, just keeping the ball, kind of circulating it around the back. She's really important in that role. And even though she's more of a natural 10 and attacking center midfielder, she does a really good job playing back to goal to keep that possession for the Cardinals. Yeah, they've been looking for someone who's, who's goal dangerous in front of net for Louisville because, again, the goals haven't been there if you're going back to conference play last year or at the start of this year. And even though it's not Cochran's natural spot, she's got the edge right now. We'll see some others there. How much at this part of non-conference play for you, as you see the numbers, they get the own goal tonight. At this point of, of non-conference play, how much are you still looking for the right combinations and how much is about, okay, this is how we're going to approach next week. We're going to get a dress rehearsal today. There's certainly something created in a competitive environment where players are always feeling like they've got to prove themselves. But as you get closer to conference play, yes, you do want to have those units clicking and you want certain players getting more and more time together. But something that's really important, not only the goals that we've talked about, but is how many are they getting on frame just to give chances, you know, to get a second second chance off an opportunity, a rebound, whatever it may be. That'll be important as well as they try to continue to manufacture goal scoring chances. Reagan Richardson, 16 in white, just her second career start, earns the throw in deep in the attacking corner for Wyoming. Drove down from Laramie to Denver yesterday, it's a couple hour drive, and then flew to Louisville. 
They played NC State and Wake Forest back in 2006. Their other forays into competition against the ACC. Had a tie in one and loss in the other. Keeley Workman with the big switch and a good one. And Autumn Weeks able to clean up for Louisville to midfield. And wins the free kick as well now for the Cardinals. Now just like today, Women's Sports takes over ACC Network every Sunday. And so next week we have volleyball at noon, UNC against Coastal Carolina, Pitt and NC State in women's soccer at 2, and then back to volleyball with BC and Merrimack at 4. That's all next Sunday right here on the ACC Network. Pitt with a win already today, 2-1 to one over Cincinnati. Samaya Fury scoring in the 88th minute to take Pitt to 7-1 and one after they lost to a top 25 opponent in Xavier on Thursday night. Or if they were not top 25, they should be. <laughs> and... Uh, we told you their opponent is NC State, which dropped a 2-0 decision to Harvard earlier today. A lot of games on the East Coast delayed or affected by weather. Wake Forest game at Brown was just straight up canceled. And Syracuse game at Fairfield, as well as the NC State-Harvard game, both delayed. Randy Waldrum at Pitt's having quite a year, isn't he, between uh, his start with Pittsburgh <laughs> and then also his World Cup. Um, he's having a good few months. He's, he proved a lot of people wrong at the World Cup, right? He was under uh, some serious pressure from Nigeria, and he put some even more pressure on his bosses and, and delivered. And then, yes, it, Pitt, has been, Pitt has been a little more consistently positive returns, and they've been climbing the ladder in the ACC. But that was cool to see because we've seen Randy Waldrum coaching throughout amateur and pro soccer in the U.S. and you can you've been able to tell right with the effort he went to with Trinidad he wants to be coaching in the, the international game so it's kind of neat to see him have that success with Nigeria at the Women's World Cup. Absolutely I've known Randy for a lot of years he actually played college soccer with my dad so I, I actually have yes. known him for a long time so I'm always cheering for him and it's great to see him do that at the international level and just how the game has grown and to have that kind of caliber of coaching the ACC is obviously huge as well. Other scores in the first game of our triple header. Northwestern, a top 20 team, beat Virginia Tech 3 to 2 despite a couple of Taylor Price goals. And then right before us, Florida State left it late, but beat their rivals from Florida 1 0 on a Jody Brown goal. Speaking of Women's World Cup participants in the 76th minute. And later tonight, Clemson and Georgia, that's a big game. North Carolina and Alabama, that's a big game. Uh, ones to watch ahead of conference play opening next weekend. Any uh, surprises or, or big takeaways from non-conference play as far as ACC candidates go, Casey? No, I, I think everyone's performing at such a strong conference. You're going to see a lot of different things during non-conference play where people are really trying to test themselves because they know that the gauntlet of the ACC is coming and you have so many ranked opponents in conference play. So very good performances so far this year. Louisville leads 1-0, 16th minute own goal from an Addy Chester corner kick. Has the Cardinals in front. And a slight pause here from our referee, Michael Laverne. And they want to get some attention for an injured Louisville player. I believe it's Maxwell. And both teams will use the opportunity to get some water in this late afternoon, early evening start. Seems like Louisville has, has settled into this a bit, Casey. Not just the goal, but in terms of, of where they're able to possess the ball right now. You know, what kind of adjustments does it take to improve that part of your game, I guess, as it, it goes on? It's a pretty early adjustment. 
It is, and I think it's the it's the midfield three that really are going to be important in possession. They've done a little bit better since the goal. Maya Maxwell, Betsy Huckabee, and Haley Howard getting on the ball. There was a lot of energy from Wyoming early, a lot of fluidity in the way they move, and so a little hard to settle into possession. But Louisville has gotten a lot better in that, and I think that also helps from just bringing the ball from side to side. It just opens up spaces to possess. You see number six there to the right. Lucy Roberts was playing a big role in that conversation. One of the vocal leaders and now Karen Ferguson days in the white hat is setting everybody straight as Maxwell gets attended to and gets to her feet, thankfully. Oh, you don't like to see that. Maxwell. Her fifth start, she's been in and out of the lineup, but contributing every game and is able to put weight on it, but is certainly not comfortable as she walks off. Sophomore from Louisville. Just take a look at the way this occurred. The ball was put out into this wide channel. Maxwell coming back to the ball, just clipped right there at the end. It looked like it was on that right ankle. But hopefully she'll be okay. It was good to see her walk off the field there at the end. Well, it's nice to be able to bring in one of the most familiar Cardinals off the bench. Raven Alexander has started six times this year. She'll come in for Maxwell, and I would presume she'll go out wide, and Savina Zamberini will move into the middle. I don't like to presume usually, but... Uh, Karen Ferguson Day's teams are usually very logically organized, and that continues. Here's Chester, neat one, two, as she goes through the middle. Lays it off for Alexander, went over the top. And that would have been a great first touch from Alexander coming yeah. in if that one would have been on frame, but... The attacking was really good here and just a lot of good play. Right tur turning over in possession, a quick wall pass there just to get going at the back line. Wortman does really well just to defend and delay here, force Chester out wide. And those are the moments you just want to hit that across frame, force a save because you've got a couple runners in the box. You never know what can happen. But another positive opportunity for the cards. I was to say, the more they can get Addie Chester running at an opposition defense, the better. Absolutely. She has that first little change of pace, which is really good. Very comfortable off the dribble. And you can see right there how it just makes the back line uncomfortable when she's running at him. Here is Raven Alexander working against the left back, Sydney Miller. And Miller, grad student from Cheyenne, won that tussle. How about the giant logo in the middle of the jersey? How are we feeling about that? <laughs> I like it. Why not? Why not? Like as an announcer, I, I, I like having numbers on both sides of the jersey and the, the numbers on the front are, are very small. But otherwise, <laughs> you know, embrace who you are. Go big or go home. And, you know, the senior team pictures, they're wearing cowgirl boots. Like they do embrace it. Yeah, and even Coach Colleen Corbin talked about that, just how proud they are of where they come from and being the only university in the state of Wyoming and representing them and just how wonderful the state is. So, um, and there, look, there you go, right there, some, some cowboy boots for the head coach as well. But I think that's really cool that they are able to do that. She is on brand, I love it. Yeah. I mean, she's from California. I wonder how long it, it took her to, to get comfortable with the boots. <laughs> <laughs> if it's, she's if all it's in. even happened yet, yeah. She's all in. First corner for Wyoming. Taking the corner for the Cowgirls, number two. You see Miller take up a spot right in front of Aaron Floyd. Jamie Tatum over to take it. Louisville open the scoring from a corner kick back in the 16th minute. Now Jamie Tatum and Wyoming try to follow suit. Wortman, the target, sailed too high for her. Neither team really at its most organized at the moment, but this is brought down by Chance. Tried to go 1v1 and wasn't really in control of that. 
Fights to win it back though. Smith, her pass too far for Chance and it'll be a Louisville throw. And that's a really great matchup on this near side channel between Chance and Sexton. It's a battle between those two and uh, they're doing extremely well, both of them. And it's gonna be fun to watch throughout this game. Mackenzie Geigel, number three, and Fiona Geiser, number 19. Both in for Louisville. Geiser began the year starting up front. She's out of the Bayern Munich system in Germany. She'd been playing for the reserves the last couple of years. See the Louisville numbers applying pressure here. And that free kick goes Louisville's way. Chester came out of the game, as did Cochran, so Lucy Roberts will deliver this free kick, which is from a deeper position anyway. Called for by Bartell. Didn't handle it cleanly, but didn't let it's anybody get a good Louisville. look either. Yeah, it's, it's good from Louisville. They're creating set-piece opportunities. That's big, and that can be a big difference. This one just floated in. It's in an awkward space for a goalkeeper. Bartel maybe could have come and just tried to collect that without the punch, but at least it's out of play for Wyoming. But giving up the corner kick, especially after what happened in the 16th minute with that goal, will be dangerous here. Betsy Huckabee to deliver. Back post is again the target. Not quite as fruitful this time. Wyoming wants to counter. And it's broken up by a hard charging. Fiona Geiser. Kylie Ballack, number 10. Among the substitutes for Wyoming, Hannah Hagen. 33 and Faith Joyner, seven, also into the game. Wyoming will go pretty deep if the scouting report is any indication. Now we want to remind you, Friday's ACC PM with Mark Packer and Taylor Tannebaum come to you from Clemson as they get ready for Clemson and Florida State Friday night in women's soccer. Oh yeah, and there's a football game on Saturday they're getting ready for as well. That game will be on ACC Network Saturday night at 8. That's Clemson and Florida Atlantic here in the soccer world. We're also watching the great game between Clemson and Florida State to open the weekend of women's college soccer. But ACC PM from Clemson on Friday. Good stop by Aaron Floyd down to her left. Second save for the sophomore goalkeeper. Well, this is a good opportunity for Wyoming. Barella just trying to find a half yard of space, find a half chance, and she does with the left foot, and that's very difficult to deal with for a keeper. Lots of players in front of her, but Floyd does really well. Raven Alexander got a step. Looking for support, and in the end, too far out in front of everybody in Cardinal Red. You could see the idea from Alexander getting into that wide space, just trying to play it across behind the back line. Anytime you do that, it can be awkward for a defender, but Bartel does really well there to get out and collect it. Neat one-touch play from Huckabee trying to connect with Geiser. Autumn Weeks almost hit Geiser, who's just getting to one knee. And Wyoming will deal with things at the back. Yeah. 
But the Wyoming changes, two of them were central midfielders with Hagen, 33, sitting the deepest, and Balak, number 10, right there in the center circle, playing higher alongside Tatum. At least that's the design. And then Faith Joyner in on the near right wing. There is Geiser. Has an assist on the year. Scored seven goals last year in reserve action for Bayern. Saw that cross blocked. And trickle out for a Louisville throw. Now quickly, Alexander, that cross hit a hand. No intent deemed the far side AR. Josh Metcalf will be another Louisville throw. Emma Kate Schroll on, Haley Howard out in the middle of the park for Louisville. And that's one thing that's interesting about all the substitutions and then the injury we saw to Maya Maxwell in the midfield. Only one player, Tatum, remains of the six that started in midfield. So it's going to be important who can establish possession, who can well, reestablish really so that each team can kind of find their foothold into the game again. How long did it take you as a sub to, to get up to rhythm? I think everyone has a little bit of a different challenge with that. Some people can come in right away. Others like to kind of ease into the game. Oh, that's dangerous. Picked off by Joyner, but she couldn't control it. The ball's still loose. Aaron Floyd is everywhere. Now Tatum a chance to hit it. Drives it and scores! Jamie Tatum from distance ties the Wyoming scoring record and ties the game as well. If you're in Louisville, that is not the player you want that to fall to. She does exactly what is needed. It's just completely accurate. A lot of things going wrong at the back for Louisville. Just initially right here, just this ball getting played in behind. It kind of looks like it's not going to be a problem. And then it's a bit sneaky here, trying to play a back pass. Lucy Roberts thinks everything's fine, but just a lot of work from Wyoming. And Floyd doing everything that she can, but just not enough as it does end up going to Tatum. Yeah, I thought Floyd had dealt with two or three different chances here, but then she was scrambling by the time the ball came to Tatum, and she unleashed it. And Floyd was it. able to get back in goal. That shot that Tatum made, Floyd was all the way back recovered. I mean, it was just absolutely accurate and a great finish. Bartel with a good punch over the head of Geiser. What I liked as well, Casey, was she put it back the direction from which the goalkeeper was coming because having to switch directions there really takes a long time. You hit it on the head right there as she's retreating to her left to have to set and go back to her right is extremely difficult and to hit it that accurately was very impressive. But I guess we should probably expect that from a player that's <laughs> um, scored as many goals as Tatum has for Wyoming. 24th career goal tying Mercy Adetoye who played from 2002 to 2005, so you're in my neck of the woods. Uh, and Adetoye also held the points record with 58, and Tatum now has 62. She passed that with a goal, which I like about, with, you know, soccer, college soccer gives two points for a goal. You don't have to spend any time tied for the record. You can just break it in one fell swoop. <laughs> uh, she did with take her, care of her business goal right away. Yeah. I'm not going to mess around and share this record. It's mine. So that a big moment. The response remains to be seen as Louisville arriving. That was Geigo crashing the box. She thought it would be a corner kick instead. It's a Wyoming goal kick. And this cross right here, really dangerous. This is put into a great area. Geigel coming in, it just looked to go off her back a little bit there. She wanted the corner kick, but it's good from Louisville. Just after giving up that goal, trying to go forward right away, create chances very quickly as the game opens up. From the back pass, Floyd plays it out for a Wyoming throw. A little momentum here. We told you Wyoming comfortable coming from behind. They won three conference games in the last three minutes last year. I'm talking 88, 89, 90th minute stuff. And then they trailed against Omaha earlier this year. 
came back to win that one two to one. They also played a barnstorming 3-3 tie at South Dakota. So these guys not afraid to mix it up on the road, that's for sure. Well, one of the things we talked about with Coach Colleen Corbin was give us something to describe this team. He said belief and trust. They've come back from behind. They trust that they can do it. They believe in each other. And uh, she really feels like they just have that intangible this year that they don't get down on themselves and just continue to battle. Thirty seventh minute from Dr. Mark in Cindy Lynn Stadium in Louisville. Cardinals won and the Wyoming Cowgirls won. First ever meeting. Geigel picked that pass off, but couldn't find the feet of Geiser. Haley Bartell from Gilbert, Arizona. Easily cleared midfield with that one, but the second ball won by Louisville. So a couple of subs here, Emerson Jennings replacing Geiser. That's not a good sign when you get taken out after 10 minutes. And on the Wyoming side, Tatum will actually come out. Our crack research staff has pointed out that Tatum has three shots and Louisville has four. Not a great sign for the Cardinals. This cross, dangerous, and Bartell got there first for Wyoming. And it's good for Louisville as they're kind of getting into those wide spaces, but you can see there's really isolated runs. It's only Geigel that was really in there. One other player kind of hanging out at the top of the box, but can they get more numbers going forward? Jennings does really well just to get this in there, but not a lot of committed runs forward for Louisville so far. Jennings just coming back from injury, so they're Glad to see her back on the field. And again, Floyd unable to connect with the teammate. Holstad, also from Gilbert, Arizona. Same high school as the goalkeeper Bartell. A couple years older, though. This is Faith Joyner, number seven. Starter last year, coming off the bench this year. Raven Alexander keeps that moving for Louisville. 40th minute, 1-1. Cardinals struck first from a corner kick. Wyoming, terrific goal from outside the penalty area just minutes ago. All right, so five minutes to go until halftime. We may get the chance to talk to Karen Ferguson days, and we can ask her. But before that, I get to ask you, what is the, the Louisville coach's message likely to be at halftime at this point? Because they've had moments where they've seemed in control of the game, but obviously that has since slipped away. I think just getting control of the possession is going to be really important. When they had control of the possession, their shape was better. They were able to get more numbers forward just because naturally you're able to build into the game. Obviously, it was a mistake from the defensive side that led to the goal, not to take away from Tatum's strike, but just making sure things collectively on the defensive side are really focused and disciplined as well. That's one of my favorite parts of the game is how you see a goal is entirely dependent on on which side you're on, right? Because from Louisville, <laughs> the goal is in entirely preventable. There's five different things we could have done differently. And for Wyoming, you're like, hey, our best player just hit upper 90 from 25 <laughs> yards. That's a pretty good goal. Yeah, she had a great moment on that one. Right, right play, set it up perfectly. But I mean, that was an incredible <laughs> shot to be able to hit that with all that scramble going on. And from the distance, she was able to do it. Can Wyoming, or Louisville for that matter, grab one before the half here. Final four minutes of the first half. A 
you just get the feeling that the heads are up a little bit more off to our left on the Cowgirls wearing white. Here's what to expect at halftime. We'll look back at that Florida State, Florida tight one. We will hear from both head coaches either side of halftime. We'll show you both goals, any other really good chances and some numbers. 1-1 the score, Wyoming and Louisville. That's what's coming up at the half. Third game of three this afternoon on the ACC network. And of course, uh, there's, there's some games on other networks as well. Clemson, Georgia, North Carolina, and Alabama worth watching after we're done here. Zamborini comes away with the ball. That turns over, though, broken up. Nikayla Copenhaver into the game. Free kick coming for Wyoming in a dangerous spot. And this is not what you want at the end of a half, especially when you're scrambling just a little bit. Wyoming's getting back into the game, kind of like they did the first 10 minutes of the game. They're ending the half as well in a very good fashion. The foul just coming from behind and clipping the midfielder there. And this will set up a dangerous opportunity in the waning minutes. Now normally you would say, okay, Tatum's hitting this, but Tatum was subbed out in favor of Copenhaver. So there's a, a conference. I haven't seen rock, paper, scissors busted out just yet. Miller is the left-footed option. And the right-footer is Copenhaver, number eight. Copenhaver drives it up and out into the east end of the stadium. Now the week three ACC Network football lineup starts Thursday night. Miami and Bethune-Cookman at 7.30 Eastern. And then a couple of excellent games for you Saturday afternoon as Wyoming threatens. Northwestern and Duke, followed by Florida Atlantic and Clemson. All that available on the ESPN app and right here on the ACC Network as Hannah Hagen earned the corner for Wyoming. These guys know a thing or two about football finishes. You may have seen a few cowgirls rushing the field after they beat Texas Tech. I'm not going to name names. That's not, that's not how I roll, but it could have happened. Second one Wyoming minute, corner, minute, and Copenhaver to deliver. Handled that defensive organization really important there for Louisville. I mean, these are really big seconds right here that you just don't want to let anything happen. Don't let Wyoming get any opportunities when you have this home advantage. Applause for the effort and the slide there. Well, the 6.30 train's a little early today. Coming here right at the end of the first half. Early goal for Louisville. Canceled out, though by Jamie Tatum's strike, her record-tying strike in the 34th minute. And through 45 minutes, Wyoming and Louisville tied at one this evening. Really interesting first half, even so far. The second half to determine who feels better about their weekend, I would imagine. Underway in the second half from Louisville. The homestanding Cardinals in red. And the visiting Cowgirls in white. And we see who can get the advantage early in this one. Maddie Chester couldn't come up with that. And Wyoming does have a chance to counter with Barella. Looking early for Maddie Chance, who was dangerous for much of that first half. And dealt with by Lizzie Sexton for Louisville. 
Yeah, it's really interesting for two teams that both want to possess. It has been a really transitional game. The first half was really end-to-end -end in a lot of ways, but I think that stems from what you're talking about, both coming off losses and for Louisville, you know, not the possession they're used to having and the chance creation. So there's a lot of just desire to really get into this game and get the win and get going in the right direction again. Emerson Jennings stays in to start the second half for Louisville. As Wyoming has pretty much gone back to starters. Uh, but yeah, as if, you know, we hadn't figured out for ourselves, just talking to the two coaches uh, kind of gave us a feel for where this game is. Wyoming a lot happier than Louisville right now. Now you could tell from Karen Ferguson days that the possession piece, it wasn't enough of it in that first half. And I think a lot of that has to do, of course, with the press of Wyoming. But there are spaces available. The speed of play and the ball movement is going to be really important for Louisville. Can they play in one and two touch? Can they find the opposite side to really kind of take the air out of the press? And they did that for portions of the first half. Chester, who's playing centrally to start this second half, gets onto that one, plays it ahead for Jennings. Played back out for Louisville throw. I mean, that's kind of one of the questions for Karen Ferguson is how do we get Addie Chester closer to goal? And she's a player that when she's running at you 1v1 in isolation, extremely dangerous, but also just more runs in the box. But that possession that they're trying to establish more in the second half, it lends itself to having players higher up the field. And Chester's one of those players. The more they can connect passes in that midfield space, then you can start to get everyone a little bit higher. Rough pass at the back for Wyoming. A little miscommunication there. You could see players kind of pointing to each other, and it's a throw in for Autumn Weeks in Louisville. Chester turns into the penalty area. Addie Chester clawed down and held on to by Haley Bartell. Good chance for Louisville here to start the second half. And you can just see how dangerous she can be when she's facing forward. This is just off a throw in. She's able to beat in the 1v1. Another player comes across. Then everyone's just scrambling. She just doesn't connect with that one. The far post was actually very available on this. Tries to cut it back. And credit to Wyoming for coming across and defending. Gherking was able to come across and put a little pressure on. But when Addie Chester is running like that, Louisville looks a lot more dangerous. This is Emerson Jennings. Lizzie Sexton was arriving all the way up from left back. And it'll be a Louisville throw. Here's Zamberini. Her shot was blocked. Chester's right-footed effort also blocked. And already this is a stark contrast to the first half. Karen Ferguson days one and it played in Wyoming's half. So far, so good. Jennings skinned one, cuts it back. Tatum hard into the tackle for Wyoming and the Cowgirls just bash it the other way. And not only the possession has been better for Louisville, but their organization defensively behind the ball for when Wyoming clears it allows them just to keep possession and continue to go. And they're doing that. Chester has come a little bit more inside. Her and Geigel are switching. Chester usually is off that left side. But I think that's gotten her a little bit more involved and just allowed her to be around the ball and the way they're trying to play make a little bit more here. Bartell, the goalkeeper, able to catch. Yeah, if you were going to play a straight 4-4-2, I understood Chester being out wide, but in a 4-2-3-1, I, 
I like getting her in the middle of the field, giving her some freedom. Yeah, she just moves in and out of spaces really well. And it, it's hard to say where she should be because she's effective in both positions. But I think the way they've lined up and having her more central is definitely paid off here in these first five minutes, just putting Wyoming on their heels. And, and to be fair, Jennings has done well off that right side to create those opportunities as well going forward. I told you, Louisville had four shots in the first 25 minutes, then none for the last 20 minutes of the first half. They fired off three in about 90 seconds there as they try to take the game by the scruff of the neck here. Chester, the highest of the attacking players for Louisville there. Jennings slid to win it. And Chester tried to play it into the space for Emerson Jennings. Didn't work out. All right, I think I'm finally ready to reset the Louisville lineup. It took me a little while to figure it out. <laughs> the defense is the same. Aaron Floyd in goal. Autumn Weeks, Carson Cherry, Lucy Roberts, and Lizzie Sexton on the back line. In the midfield, Betsy Huckabee, Haley Howard, and Savina Zamborini are the three central players. Chester, Geigel, and Jennings are the front runners for Louisville. And as you said, Casey, there's a whole lot of position swapping going on, and that's not easy to defend. It isn't. The fluidity is really hard because you're starting to pull players out. Center backs are stepping, leaving spaces behind, and, and that's something you want to see. And both of these teams are very capable of that, but definitely Louisville in this beginning part has done that more. But I think we also want to point out that the outside backs are stepping really high. Autumn Weeks is stepping high, Lizzie Sexton. So anytime Wyoming's trying to play out, they're there to really make sure there's no space for the wingers to get going the other direction. I think Zamborini is wide right actually now with Chester as the attacking midfielder underneath of Emerson Jennings. But again, it's a bit of semantics at this point because they're all attacking. Zamborini on the run and wound up in a collision and without the ball. Three-way collision, the ball falls to Tatum for Wyoming, looking long for the run of Glover. She had scored in three straight before Thursday, looking for Chance, who got a shot off and forced Aaron Floyd into action. Well, and this is a lot of fun because in the first half, you and I talked about how there was only maybe one, maybe two runners in the box for Louisville. There was five there. It didn't come off technically, but there were five players running there. Now the flip side is it leaves space for this counter-attacking ball on the back side. But Lucy Roberts is really well to come across to the run of Matty Chance. Yeah, I think that's the problem for Louisville that they're going to face come ACC play. They're not going to be able to get five running consistently into the penalty area because it will leave them dangerously exposed. But that's a problem for another night, <laughs> like Saturday. <laughs> yeah, that's the give and take of, of playing the game, right? Is when do you go, when do you risk, and, and how do you situate yourself in order to mitigate the team going the other direction? That's really difficult. Again, just five goals in 10 ACC games last year for Louisville. Five goals through their first seven games this year against obviously different competition. As that pass runs out of bounds for a Wyoming throw. Fifty-fifth minute, and you see Louisville trying to turn the tide here in the second half. This is Jennings. She's been a bright spot. Now Zamborini. Got the shot off, but couldn't get it near the target. Emerson Jennings, sophomore from Noblesville, Indiana. Got five starts last year, scored once, has been in concussion protocol. So great to see her back on the field and looking so lively. Yeah, I think she did well when she came in in the first half, but she's definitely making her presence felt here. and. 
just being able to connect with Chester up in those front running positions. She's been really active. She's able to get turned and get going. You can just see that little bit of energy that she's providing so far. And Louisville will definitely want to capitalize on that. She's Casey White, national champion, ACC tournament MVP with North Carolina. I'm Jonathan Yardley, glad you're joining us. Third game of our women's soccer triple header this afternoon into this evening here on ACC Network. Jamie Tatum of Wyoming, diagonal ball, chested down by Weeks. Of course, ACC play underway on the men's side over the weekend, and Louisville late come from behind. 2-2 tie against the defending national champion Syracuse. It was a heck of a game. Women's conference play underway next weekend. Louisville trying to arrive on a high note. Bartell with sure hands diving to her right. And one of the things that I think is making this uncomfortable for Wyoming is at times Louisville looks more like they're in a 4-1-3-2. Chester and Emerson Jennings are kind of putting themselves on the center backs and having some movement. That's allowing Zamberini to go in behind, and it just draws the backs out. You can see back stepping, but then that late run comes from Zamberini out of the midfield, able to take in line, just not able to find anyone here and hits it to the near post. But it's a good opportunity, and that interchange is causing problems. Down to her left, big stop from Aaron Floyd. Kind of sneaky, tough play as Maddie Chance was again running in behind the Louisville defense. And just real quick, one touch balls in behind are always so dangerous. If your back line's not perfectly positioned and making sure the line is, is straight there, it allows Chance to get in and, and almost a really good opportunity there to go ahead. Ball played out of the back, looking for the run of Chester. Wortman leaves it for Bartell. There was a little miscommunication. That clearance was deflected, but found Tatum. One back by Haley Howard of Louisville. Crossfield ball, finds Jennings. She couldn't bring it under control and will chase it down. Clear header off the delivery from Emerson Jennings. And Mackenzie Geigel frustrated with where that ended up. Well, Karen Ferguson Days definitely wanted to play in the attacking half, and, and they have done that <laughs> so far. They took that to heart. It's a lot of energy, but it's not just energy, it's the way they're movement, moving, and this ball is very dangerous. Geigel could have done better with that one, just trying to get over it. But still, a lot of chance creation here for Louisville in the second half. Yeah, the ideas, the adjustments we're seeing from Louisville are a big deal in this team's development. Here is Geigel through the middle. Beats one. Tries it herself, and Bartell gives it the courtesy dive. we will take the goal kick. And not wasting any time, Wyoming. First look at Lily Brongo. Sophomore from Spencerport, New York. I'm not sure how she found her way to the cowgirl country of Wyoming. But they're glad she did in for the first time. Chance from distance, but again, sails over the top. Okay, when you make two subs like that back to back and you don't make them at the same break, are you just trying to break up the rhythm more? Because you pretty much made the decision to make the sub at just about the same time. I think, I think so. I think it's smart. Right now, it's all Louisville during this. So you've got to figure out how do we slow this down. They're matching up with the center backs. So it's really causing issues. I think taking Jamie Tatum out, one, slows it down, and two, she can pass on some messages of how they want to solve this and try to slow down Louisville. Emerson Jennings, tricky feet. Now Geigel gets a step, and really good covering defense by Ray Gerking of Wyoming to make sure that step didn't let the cross come in. 
That was well, Although it's kind of been all for Louisville, the longer Wyoming can keep them from scoring, the better, because there can be adjustments made from Colleen Corman, you know, and there's new players coming in. And can they keep that exact, you know, type of setup they have going with the energy and the execution coming after? All right, well, we're getting tested here. Emma Hiscock, Morgan Bentley, and Emma Kate Schroll into the game for Louisville. From the throw in, it's floated in. Raven Alexander also back in. All right, 62nd minute, Louisville's adjustments have definitely put them on the front foot. What can Colleen Corbin and Wyoming do in terms of adjustments with or without Tatum? You know she's coming back into the game. What adjustments do they things. need to make? Yeah, I think they've got to think about playing longer. They've got to, they know that there's five players committed forward for Louisville. You say play longer in terms of the early ball to get past that press? Correct. This one's in, it's dangerous, and out there aggressively to get it, Haley Bartell. Well, they're committing five players forward, so, but they're not necessarily keeping all five players back, because even the holding mids are stepping up to try to keep Wyoming locked in their end. So that ball in behind can be really something dangerous, but Louisville still just continues to go. The pace a little bit too much on that ball behind the back line in the opposite direction, but Wyoming's going to have to figure out, okay, how do they deal with those two central players running at their back line, and how do they beat that pressure that's coming initially? All right, 63rd minute. Louisville took a lead in this game, and Wyoming tied it with an excellent goal from Tatum from distance. Louisville came out really charging hard to start this second half and with all the substitutions we've gotten a little bit choppy since then here's chance wants to use her speed clean tackle you may have heard voices in brown and gold who disagree Both teams trying to get control of this right now because it is a bit of a free-for-all. And we're here for it. Let's go. Jazzy Barella back in the game for Wyoming, number nine. Look at the spaces available on the field. The gap right between attacking players in the back line is huge for both teams. When I love the pace of this game, it's not that it's just hectic for hectic sake. It's, it's getting energy forward. It's still connecting passes. And Karen Ferguson Days talked about doing it in their attacking half. So let's keep the ball, but let's do it there. So let's get it there quickly. It was well read by Smith because Howard didn't know where the ball was after it came off her head. And Wyoming was able to collect. Here is Brongo. Tries to beat Raven Alexander 1v1. Not on this field. Wide open up the middle. Numbers for Louisville. They can't control it, though. And it's sent the other way. Autumn Weeks fought hard to win it back and spread it out wide. Hiscock can't run it down. And don't you get the feeling that there might have been some other things said at halftime of like, this is our home field. We need to go <laughs> after it. Like, let's go. What are we doing? And it wasn't that it was a bad first half, but you've just seen the energy level pick up and just defending your home turf, getting after it. And Wyoming's responding, but it's scrambled because Louisville's just putting numbers and numbers going forward into the attacking half. That's turned over. Alexander. Corner kick coming. Corner kick. 
Whenever I see the raft of substitutions, I get the sense that the coach said, I know it's hot, go as hard as you can, and we'll sub you out if we have to. Exactly. You got a little bit of that in the second half that you can do as you see Raven Alexander earning that corner kick right there. But you're right with the many substitutions that came in. The expectation is run and go. Do it cerebrally. Have some thoughts. But let's just try to get as many chances as we can. Huckabee's corner right in the six. Out for a goal kick. After Cherry tried to meet it at the back post. It's a good service to the back post area right here. Just floated up. It's out of the reach of Bartell, but just not able to organize the run to direct that across frame. So Jamie Tatum came back in for Wyoming, replacing Barella. So we'll see who's playing up front for the Cowgirls. And again, the camera's been tilted this way most of the second half. Brongo at full stretch to break that up, get it ahead. Autumn Weeks says, I'll take the throw in. Thank you very much. Alexander with Hiscock running off of her, playing it across. Morgan Bentley didn't get a crack at it because of the sliding defensive efforts. Sexton's pass broken up by Smith, but she's able to win it back. Part of that Indy 11 team that won the W League Championship. It was such a great season this summer. Hiscox cross took a deflection. Did not fall in the end for either Huckabee cleanly or Alexander. But Louisville still pushing the envelope. And just getting into the wide spaces, there's a lot of runs from inside to out that's exposing this area. And they're able to get a little bit of that half yard of space to get a service across. It's not a full chance, but look at the numbers. Four different players for the Cardinals in the penalty area. So that organization can just get a little better, a little more dangerous service. That'll provide a good opportunity. Now this Saturday afternoon, special time, 2 Eastern. Check out the ACC Huddle Crew kicking off the afternoon pregame show for the Northwestern Duke football game, which is at 3.30. And then back at 6.30, they'll have a pregame show for FAU Clemson at 8. Louisville, of course, off to a good start on the football field. Wyoming off to a good start on the football field. Your alma mater, my alma mater getting some wins out there. So uh, one of ours is not on the ACC network. That's OK. But uh, the <laughs> ACC Huddle Crew is on the ACC Network on Saturday. Check that out. Huckabee comes over, get some instructions. Seventieth minute. Louisville applying pressure. You can see that first run is designed to get the defense to drop deeper and give Louisville more room to attack. But in this case, the goalkeeper, Bartell, got out to collect. The second level of just getting that set pieces right is that run that has to go in front of the goalkeeper. They do a good job with that fake to get the defense to drop, but no one's cutting in front of Bartell. But these second and third chance opportunities are really important for how you organize. That can make a huge difference. Set pieces so often are really the difference in these tightly contested games. So Fiona Geiser in. And again, hard running up top for Everybody who's going in in an attacking spot for Louisville right now. Guys are trying to turn here. That's a Louisville throw.
Yeah, Hiscock wants to be on her left foot. She is inverted playing on the right side and lost that one over the end line. Substitutions continue to roll. Kylie Ballack coming back in. She's been starting much of the year. And she had the assist on the Tatum long range goal. Freshman from Colorado. Real soccer family. Her brother Ethan plays at Virginia Tech. And her younger sister Abby may be one that we, we hear from from that Real Colorado system has already played for the U.S. at the under 15 level. Hagen re-enters. A couple non-conference games, or one non-conference game still left. They're at North Dakota on Thursday. And then conference play will open with UNLV and Nevada in September. I got to say, they were picked first in a very close vote in the Mountain West, as you see their upcoming schedule. The, they play five home games, six away this year. The teams two through six, the next five teams after them, they play all of them away. It's like the worst schedule draw <laughs> you could imagine. So it is not going to be an easy Mountain West regular season by any stretch. Hey, well, this is a good tester for them, right? You have to go on the road to Louisville, a team in the ACC, down a goal, tie it up. Now you're facing this onslaught of attack from Louisville. So it's really good in preparation for that because that is going to be a very difficult challenge for Wyoming. You figure the Mountain West does not usually get two bids, so you're going to work your way into the conference tournament and focus on that. But that is going to be some, some tough sledding. Geyser ahead for Hiscock, trying to switch the field. And there is space over there. Cross sent in low, well defended. I believe it was Gerking again. She was a starter a couple of years ago for Wyoming. Hasn't seen the field as a starter since until today. Lucy Roberts in position to break that up for Louisville. Well, we talked about how transitional the first half was, but we might be outdoing <laughs> ourselves in the second half because it is a lot of back and forth. And you can see a lot of substitutions coming, I think, from Louisville's side, keeping the pressure up, keeping the energy in that new system they're kind of playing with having two players play more central. But for Wyoming, kind of just trying to figure out how can we get a foothold into this game? I'm assuming that's why they brought Tatum out, just to talk to her, get this sorted, and see if they can sneak one with a counterattack. Oh, she's in. Emma Hiscock drives it, Bartell equal to it. Hiscock has been dangerous in this second half. Well, and Gherkin does really well right here. Wasn't able to get to the first one, but just continues to go. And Hiscock taking it to her left. Just not a lot of power on that shot. Putting it in a range that's a little bit easier for Bartell right at her in the air. But just like that, there's space. Probably the best chance of this second half for Louisville. Wyoming the other way with Chance. Used Ballack as a decoy. Pass broken up by Alexander for Louisville, though. Yeah, this seems like out and out 4 4 2 time for Louisville. Mm -hmm. They want to win this game. Well, it's a good setup for what they're trying to do with having the two front and the three in behind. So in that 4-1-3-2, like you said, and it, you immediately have three runners in behind the front two. And so it just puts the back line of Wyoming just really on the defensive. They're having to chase towards their own goal. And it's very hard to predict the movement of those five players because they can be really fluid and go in to out, out to in. And that's difficult to defend. Neat footwork by Holstad, the right back, to get this forward. Joyner trying to switch. Broken up there. And just out of reach. Six. 
76th minute, one all between Wyoming and Louisville. The Cardinals scored first back in the 16th minute. As we get the raft of subs, Chester, Jennings, Geigel, and Zamborini all coming back in here. These are the guys that were really causing havoc in the first 15 minutes. So this is kind of a 15-15-15 switch to let these guys chase the game here. And Chester will chase this one down. Addy Chester puts it away. Louisville needs a home win. Trying to protect this turf. And it is 2-1 Cardinals on Addy Chester's finish. And that's just so good from Louisville. Just so many runs going forward. There are a lot of penetrating runs that it just make it so difficult. The fans are so happy to see this goal. And I think this is big for this Louisville team. A turnover right here in midfield. It's this defensive effort right here that able to get this ball, win it. And they're looking to go forward right away. Geigel gets out of the way, allows this long ball in behind. Look at the run from Chester. She comes out of nowhere. But the finishing touch is what's impressive. The first touch to set herself up and then just able to open up to that far post and be able to finish in. It's a great goal for the front runner. I missed the pass in real time. What a pass from Haley Howard. My God, that was perfect. And Chester able to run onto it. They needed a player who's goal dangerous. She's it. And, and it's the Louisville. recognition, you're right, of that pass. I think that's a great point from you that just being able to play it quickly and right away because Wyoming was starting to get forward and that's when they're in that shape where they're really exposed and Chester took complete advantage of it. Well, that's been coming the whole second half, but again, given Louisville's scoring struggles, you weren't sure if it would come. Now they have the lead. Let's see Wyoming attack this, because you know they're not going quietly. Emerson Jennings made one player miss. And she's daring a lot more to catch up with her. Still Jennings has help. Chance didn't come off, and Wyoming will try to go the other way. Maddie Chance, the winger. Didn't have enough. Lizzie Sexton got the best of her that time and took the foul as well out of frustration by Chance. Well, I just think there's no answers really right now for what Louisville's doing. So you can see that frustration, as you said, coming out on the other end. Lizzie Sexton has been doing so well, not only stepping forward and not allowing the Wyoming front runners to have much space, but also just protecting the space in behind the back line and drawing this foul from chance. In the first half, again, shot count doesn't always tell the whole story, but Wyoming had seven shots, Louisville had four. None of them after the 25th minute. In the second half, 10 to 2, and that does tell the story of what this second half has looked like. I think Karen Ferguson Days has done just such a great job in the second half of recognizing that maybe they weren't going to establish a lot of possession if they played out of their normal system and just tried to build around because Wyoming's press was really effective. So switching things up like that formationally, but also lighting a fire in her team to go forward and be dangerous. You can see it in the way that Jennings is going at the back line, Chester as well, and then Geigel supporting from underneath. Now, this is a loaded question I did not warn you about, so fair enough. <laughs> Go for it. Do you roll this out against Virginia? I mean, can you play Virginia this way, this aggressively? No, right? Did you take the, like, thoughts out of my head, though? Because <laughs> it, it's, a, it's an interesting question to pose, definitely. Back post cross was dangerous. Chester couldn't get there. I mean, Virginia's super skilled, but they're not blowing people away right now. 
No, and I'm not ignoring your question. I just, you know, wanted yeah, to yeah. have a few extra seconds there. But no, I, I think that it's it's a difficult thing you have to think about because they're creating chances like this where they're getting more players forward. The scary part is you do leave yourself exposed if a team's able to deal with it and has someone that's able to break lines and therefore run at your back line. Wyoming hasn't figured that out. Maybe one or two chances, but Louisville's been able to recover. You have to expect against a UVA um, that they're going to have more of those players that might be able to take advantage of that. And are you willing to take that risk? I mean, I think this confident version of Louisville could cause problems for a lot of people, but you also have to respect the attack from the other team as well. Yeah, I think the answer is no, but I would kind of like to see them try. Emerson Jennings, let's fly. I think Louisville so too. I think it'd be forward. very interesting. But now there, now there's footage of them doing this, so there will be some scout for that. But I think it'll be interesting. At least they have this when they're able to go to it. And I think Jennings right there with that strike was really great. They haven't really looked from distance, so it's not a bad look from her. Um, but when you can play out of a couple different systems and in a few different ways, it just allows you to kind of change things up as you go throughout ACC play. I'm about to say, Steve Swanson's watching this saying, please, please throw this many numbers at us. Oh, they're in again. Emerson Jennings behind the defense. Numbers close her down. She goes down, and the ball cleared away. And Michael Laverne saw nothing wrong with it. Emerson Jennings felt there was. And Jennings does really well, just pressing there, very industrious, gets a touch in behind, another touch. And it looked like there was a little clip on the leg there. I'm not sure. It kind of sandwiched in between the two. But I like how aggressive she's going. Does she touch that right ankle? Uh, maybe not. A little bit coming in a little bit later. But she's causing problems going in those 1v1 opportunities. Even the experimental review available in non-conference play wouldn't have helped that one because it had to be a call on the field that was then reviewed. This one was a no call. See if Wyoming can mount a threat here. Up back and through, targeting Jennings. And this time, Miller able to get the ball back to her goalkeeper. Eighty second minute and those in red and black stripes feeling a lot better than they did half an hour ago. But there's work to be done. Again, they will host Virginia here Saturday night in their ACC opener. And then the following weekend home against Pitt and at Miami. First three of ten conference games. Zamberini tried to keep it moving. Driven just wide at the back post. Geigel threatening again. Again, lots of runners in the box. Geigel able to face up there, given too much time to be able to face and tries to go for that far post with the left foot. Just really close to putting that in the side netting. Not to say everything right except dragging it just a hair wide at the end. Louisville would sure like a third to make sure of this. Hagen able to fake two out of position and bring in the left back Miller. But Haley Howard up there forcing some pressure for Louisville. She is called for the foul, but. She didn't give Wyoming any space to get that forward. Just back to goal there, and it, it's hard sometimes. You commit these fouls because you're playing very aggressively. No real need to foul there as Wyoming's going towards their own goal. Now you give them this opportunity to serve it in, but it's tough to have that aggressiveness on the attacking side and then the patience shown to defend in that midfield third. Clock runs as... Wortman, I beg your pardon. Gherking at the back tried to figure out exactly from where she could take that. This bounces around in the penalty area. And despite Autumn Week's best efforts, goes out for a throw. Now there's a little bit of 
connection there as Richardson went down, but no harm, no foul. Melissa Glover back in, Lily Brongo back in. Brongo's got the throw. Barella thinking shoot first, and why not? Runs all the way through. Here's Chance and Sexton again. This time Maddie Chance picks her pocket. Lizzie Sexton returns the favor though. Well won back by Eliza Grace Smith. And that was a neat touch as well. Final five minutes in Louisville. Cardinals looking for their second win of the season, trying to hold on against a more than game Wyoming team this afternoon. And while you want to stay organized, I think you also don't want to risk just sitting back in your half, especially with the way they've been playing. Why not continue to put pressure? You can sit your holding mid a little bit further, but don't let Wyoming have time. You certainly don't want Tatum to get on the ball for Wyoming. Chester into the path of Emerson Jennings. Let it go early, and that really didn't take enough time off the clock. And lets Wyoming go the other way. Here's Glover. Corner kick coming as Carson Cherry was out working against her that time. Corner at this end, open the scoring for Louisville back in the 16th minute. Jamie Tatum, who has Wyoming's goal, will take this one. Wyoming's third of the day. Back post. One-handed punch from Floyd and sent back in wide of the target. Goal kick coming and a sigh of relief for Louisville. Those are scary moments right there when you're winding down a half. You've dominated the entire half and you just want to make sure that you're really locked in. Defensively, you're organized, you're willing to challenge. Goalkeeper Floyd comes up big right here with this punch. This is a bit of a scary moment and a good strike there, right there from the midfielder Smith, but just not on target and didn't have to test Floyd on that one. Under three minutes to play. Miller beat one. Out for another corner. Are they going to be in more of a hurry? This is taking a long time. Like, I know you want to get your corner right, but this is the last three minutes. The clock's running. Tatum again, 88th minute. Back post and in! Celebrate! Wyoming steals it late again, 88th minute, tying it up! How about them, Cowgirls? And that's what's so incredibly dangerous was when you start to sit back a little bit, and I don't think it was done on purpose, just kind of unintentionally as you get towards the end of the game, what was working for you, now you're starting to sit back. You give these opportunities, the header initially straight down, and that is the exact technique you ask out of your front runners when they're going on corner kicks. You've got to get above the ball, head it straight down. And I believe that was Barella. Yeah, and by that celebration, I think so. It was a great finish there for the equalizer. What a gut punch for Louisville. Again, like this is exactly what Wyoming does, right? We told you three goals to win games in the last three minutes of a game last year. Came from behind to beat Omaha. Wild game with South Dakota. And here we are, 2-2, and still a minute 45 to go. And this is where you talk about ties feeling different. If it does, in fact, end in a tie, when you come back, you, you really have a lot of momentum, you're excited, all of that. And with the way Louisville has played in the second half, 
it's just a really gut-wrenching thing to give up a goal that last second in, in a tightly contested match, but one they really had a hold on here. I mean, Wyoming's been asking the question, who's the number nine with Alyssa Bedard out? And Jazzy Barella, who wears number nine, now has three goals, and that was a classic back post header finish. Is there one more twist? That pass broken up by Weeks, but, well, she does get the free kick call. Louisville wants to go early. Bentley just in there to chase, wins a throw in, wants it quickly. 90th minute at Louisville, Addie Chester. Will she try it herself? Was taken down, free kick coming for the Cardinals in prime scoring position. And they're going to have to be you somewhat draw careful up, here. Right? As yeah, a kid, you draw to. this up. 90th minute free kick <laughs> to win a game. You try to get the clock stopped if you can. Give yourself some time, the clock is running. Final kick of the game. Caught by the goalkeeper, Bartell, and that will do it. They have belief in Wyoming, and it allows them to come from behind twice in this.